to a beautiful Quaker, written by George Gordon, Lord Byron, found in Hours of Idleness, 1807, read by Remedy Robinson. Sweet girl, though only once we met, that meeting I shall never forget, and though we never may meet again, remembrance will thy form retain. I would not say I love you, but still my senses struggle with my will in vain to drive thee from my breast. My thoughts are more and more repressed. In vain I check the rising sighs, another to the last replies. Perhaps this is not love, but yet our meeting I can never forget. What, though we never silence broke, our eyes a sweeter language spoke, the tongue in flattering falsehood deals, and tells the tale and never feels. Deceit the guilty lips in part, and hush the mandates of the heart. But souls interpreters, the eyes, spurn such restraint and scorn disguise. As though our glances often conversed, in all our bosoms felt rehearsed, no spirit from within reproved us, say rather, twas the spirit moved us. Though what they uttered I repress, yet I conceive thou'lt partly guess. For as on thee my memory ponders, perchance to me thine also wanders. This for myself at least I'll say, Thy form appears through night, through day. Awake with it, my fancy teems. In sleep, it smiles in fleeting dreams. The vision charms the hours away and bids me curse Aurora's ray for breaking slumbers of delight which make me wish for endless night. Since, oh, whatever my future fate, shall joy or woe my steps await, Tempted by love, by storms beset, Thine image I can never forget. Alas, again no more we meet, No more former looks repeat, Then let me breathe this parting prayer, The dictate of my bosom's care. May heaven so guard my lovely Quaker, That anguish can never overtake her that peace and virtue never forsake her, but bliss be I, her heart's partaker. Oh, may the happy mortal fated to be my dearest ties related, for her each hour new joys to discover and lose the husband in the lover. May that fair bosom never know what tis the feel, the restless woe which stings the soul with vain regret of him who can never forget.